Hi guys, welcome back to what is going to be maybe the uh, final stream of Stories Untold. We're going to be, st uh, if you're watching this on demand, this is likely going to be inserted into, like, the middle of another video because last time we were streaming, uh, it seemed like we came across a glitch. So we had to cut the stream there, I didn't have time to go back and replay the entire level. So what I've done is uh, skipped a little bit ahead into... Um, what was it called? Final session. I think the the fourth and final mini, uh, fourth and final episode of Stories Untold is called Final Session. I played a bit ways into that, and then we're gonna uh, carry on from there once the game starts, <clears throat> or once we actually start jumping into the game, which is going to be in about ten minutes. Uh, I'm streaming a little bit earlier today, so I do want to give that ten minutes for people to start meandering on over. So feel free to skip ahead to when the game starts, or you can chill with me. This is my first Monday afternoon stream. If you've been following along throughout this uh, series of playing Stories Untold, you will know that I started taking Mondays off starting today from work um, and it's really refreshing. Ah, so far it's doing really good for me. I feel a whole lot better having an extra day off. Having two days off in a row is very helpful, <laughs> like mentally. Ha does anyone else ever struggle with like when they finally have a day off, but it's only one day off, <clears throat> and then they have to go back to work the, the day after, that they pressure themselves into enjoying, you have to enjoy this day. You, this is your only day, all right? You need to get done. You better, you have to, you better get done everything that you had planned for today. You know, all of your chores that you haven't done because you've been too tired after work, you gotta get those chores done. Hey, just a guy. And all of those, those, <laughs> all of those, um, errands that you had to run, you got to do those errands. And if you haven't cooked, then you need to cook. And then you may need to, you have to do your laundry because if you haven't done your laundry through the week, and you better get that done on your day off too. And hey, Caddis, how's it going? You have to get your laundry done on your day off too. And then that laundry needs to go and get dried. And then you need to set out your clothes for tomorrow. And lunch needs to be repaired. But then you also need to like, well, for me, stream. <laughs> and, uh, 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 not just stream, but then actually, dare I say, relax and enjoy your day on your one day off. So do you ever find yourself that on your one day off, where you have to go to work the day after, you, uh, you don't enjoy your day off because you're too stressed out about the fact that you have to go back to work the next day, so you better fucking enjoy this day. <laughs> You better make the most of it. <laughs> hey, Ark. Sorry, I know this is a little bit of an earlier stream, but my timeline for um, what I have what what I have to do today has been moved up f earlier in the day than it usually does for my daily routine as all. Well. So I had to start a little bit earlier. <coughs> no, it's loading. We haven't started the game yet. Uh, we're still sitting at our lovely beautiful stream starting soon screen. What I did is I played uh, the level, the episode that we're on up until like we get to actually walk around and explore the hospital because I feel like I, I feel like I missed one of the cassette tapes last time I was here. So I'm gonna make sh try to make sure that I have all of them. And actually, Ark, uh, we've all seen, you've seen this portion before, too, where we're kind of meandering around the hospital, so it's nothing too, it's nothing visually new. It's just going to be me looking for the cassettes, to be honest. How's everybody doing today? Caddis, good to see you here. Just a guy, was able to make it. Guy, 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 guy. Guy, what time zone are you in? <clears throat> so anyway, the point I was getting to with my ramble, uh, I just want to be the first one in awe. <laughs> uh, 
the point I was trying to make with the ramble is that having two days off in a row can sometimes be just do wonders for you because I enjoyed yesterday off more than I usually do knowing that it's okay if I don't get something done today I still have tomorrow you turned in your thesis last week your brain is mush oh my god I can't imagine how difficult and stressful writing a thesis is like I've just heard about <laughs> I've heard about how serious and very hardcore those are what was your thesis on if you don't mind me asking I'm super curious about theses <laughs> It sounds very intimidating having to write a thesis. So for the most part when people come up with a thesis do they have to come up with their own statement or their own uh, their own stance, their own argument for something that is like like kind of new, right? Like it's something that's not super super well a well-known argument before, right? They try to do something that's uh, a new idea? Is that... Do I have the right understanding? You're from the Netherlands, guy! Oh my god, that's so cool! That makes you Dutch! I love the Dutch accent. I... Yeah. <laughs> the future of libraries and how we can make them more inclusive to diverse groups. Ah! You're getting your master's in library science. Oh, that is super cool! Wow. Yes, that's what I like about um, theses is because like you come up with something that is your, that's, that's your idea. It's like your baby and you propose it, right? <coughs> and they could be pretty research intensive, right? Support your local libraries. I do have a library card and I, I have, it's been a little bit since I've been to it, but I have checked out books from there. <coughs> BRB, you want to be able to watch right now anyways? Oh, you won't be able to watch right now anyways. Oh, okay. All right. No worries. We're here. We're here, buddy. Sometimes they're more structured. The mandatory part of mine was a professional development plan at the end. Oh, interesting. <gasps> oh my god, guys. <gasps> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I have some leftover Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Ah! I'm so excited. I forgot that I did. You know, it's not... It's good as super fresh coffee, but it's 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 iced coffee, all right? Let me <laughs> hold on. That needs to be inserted at the beginning of my my statement because it's very important. Leftover hot coffee, disgusting. No, throw it away. Like I don't even really like reheating hot coffee even if it's like an hour old and it's gotten a little bit cool. I don't really like doing that. I do it cuz you know, I'm not like a a coffee supremacist or a coffee elitist, but uh I prefer it. I just think that it tastes really the best. It, it uh, degrades in quality faster than iced coffee. If you have the, uh, if the ice is removed from the iced coffee. But I always get less ice. I always get light ice in my iced coffee because I get, I always get a large one. <laughs> I always get a large one and I ask for light ice because I drink it throughout the day and if I don't finish it then like if the ice has melted it doesn't dilute the entire rest of the coffee it's still water like it's a little bit watered down from some of the ice but it's not just like drinking liquid disappointment which is what happens if I get a regular amount of ice in my iced coffee and I don't drink it before the ice melts that is so sad my heart just sinks into my stomach it's like it's like I don't know it's a feeling akin to like somebody murdering a My Little Pony. I would feel s just, it's really disappointing and sad. Ah. 
So I get light eyes. <sighs> and then I'll put it in the fridge. I'll only pour out the amount that I want to drink right now and then keep it in the fridge. Keep that ice from melting. Mm. You know what I got? I got the Girl Scout cookie flavor coconut caramel iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Dude, you guys. That is where it's at. I love coconut. I love caramel. All right, let's get into the game. Do, 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 do. All right, we are in the hospital. We just, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, this is important. This is important. We just came out of the little, bu of the little bunker. How am I doing? I'm doing really good. Actually, you jumped in right when I was rambling about uh, how much better it is that I have two days off in a row instead of just like one, like two separate days off during the week. It's, it feels really good. I enjoyed yesterday. I was able to relax yesterday and enjoy my day. I'm going to relax and enjoy my day today. I'm feeling good. Thank you. That's really sweet of you to ask. I appreciate that. But I feel I feel pretty good. Last week was a little bit scary still, but uh I think I think we're doing well. I think I'm doing well. I'm doing pretty good. This doesn't make sense to you. I just walked out of the bunker. What I was gonna say, okay, I reread the police report on the traffic accident. The um the traffic accident, the whiskey bottle was indeed found in the deceased police officer's car in his passenger side of the car, and he smelled of whiskey, not us, the player. So, and it was uh, a friend, like some sort of a interview of one of the police officer's friends, retired, sorry, retired police officer's friends, that was saying um, he's never talked about alcohol. There's no way he was an alcoholic. That Asian guy is hiding something. I wonder if that's true or if it's just denial that a really good friend of his turned out to be a drunk driver, killed himself, and killed, <coughs> ended up killing the passenger of our vehicle, which was our sis. All right, I'm going to make sure that I get all the tapes this time. He has quite an imagination in this station. I guess it's from the shows he's been watching. This time he described a, an A&E visit as a government conspiracy or some sort of lab. It's, uh, it's interesting stuff, and it's obviously pure fiction. But I guess it's just his way of coping for now. We'll see how we progress in future sessions. <laughs> I forgot that happened. All right, we're gonna look really closely for the for the cassette tapes. I feel like I missed one. Get out of my face, door! Don't you know who you're dealing with? Okay, nothing. Oh wait, wait, wait! Here's the one I missed. I did miss one. We found him lying there sobbing while his sister died in the car next to him. While Hennings died next to him. What the fuck was he thinking? She was still alive when we got to her. If he'd have done something, they could all still be here. What? What? So he was conscious immediately following the accident. Let's look back here. What? Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot for my brain to process, like in one short little clip. On um, the first thing I, I'm thinking is, oh my god, how? Why are you criticizing a guy who is literally like watching two human beings die in front of him? One of them is his sister, somebody he loves and has grown up with his entire life. He's probably very bonded to, very attached to. You can't, ha like, how? How dare you, like? put the blame on him like why didn't you think clearly and concisely why why weren't you completely cl like clear in your thinking that you did so to do something to help them and save them while they were dying if he was freaking out like that that is a very very ex that's an extremely tragic e traumatic event 
I don't think anybody has the right to say, like, it's your fault they died. Like, if you had administered emergency first aid right then and there, if you had been doing CPR, they would have lived. Who does that? Nobody does that. Nobody does that. And secondly, but then, but then I also question, like, since it's so, so unrealistic for somebody to criticize like the surviving passenger of an accident for not saving the people who were critically critically injured and the uh, the police officer Hennings or Hemmings or whatever his name was he was found wh when the uh, when the ambulance arrived he was dead so I there's I'm certain that there was nothing that he could have done to save him like as a former EMT there was probably nothing he could have done to save Hemmings so, so it's since unreal, so it's, <laughs> little dyslexia setting in, since it's so unrealistic to be criticizing <clears throat> someone in that kind of situation, why? Why is somebody, like, it makes me a little bit suspicious. Is there some other reason why a couple people, if, if that's not the same man, a couple people are angry and, like, accusing... Mr. Asian or James, us, J us James, of it being our fault. The friend of the police officer said that we must have been hiding something. And then whoever it was on that tape, nah, maybe it was the same guy. Saying, oh, if he had done something. That's so un unrealistic. Oh, you know what? The guy did sound hysterical on the tape just now. The guy on the tape sounded hysterical. He was probably hysterical with grief, and he wasn't thinking clearly either. He was probably just really, really upset about the fact that his friend died. And um, he, and he felt really helpless. He didn't want to put the blame on his friend, who looks very suspicious with having the whiskey bottle in the in the car and everything. You honestly believe that Hennings was drunk at the wheel and not this little shit? If he wakes up, when he wakes up, I want answers. Until then, you handle it. You write up, I'm out. That must be the police officers. <clears throat> that must be the police officer. It not must be, but I'm hypothesizing that that's the police officer on scene of the accident who personally knew Former police officer Hemmings. Hennings. Hennings? Hemmings. But this has to be related, so there is there is going to be a big twist. There's a big reveal at the end because everybody is dying to know what is in James's memory. What is he not remembering? He he has this crucial information about something that happened. We don't know what it is. Oh my god, are you f Oh, I thought my game just crashed. Ha 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 ha! I thought it just completely crashed. I wonder why I can't open that door. So, <clears throat> people keep saying, you know, you need to remember, you have to remember. So this can't just be a simple instance of- no, we don't go in there yet. Oh! Uh, this can't just be a simple instance of a dr drunk driver hitting James and his sister. If there's so much of a big deal being made about his memory and waking him up and the, the hostility of the officer <coughs> in that tape. Right? That makes sense. And if you think like a storyteller which Ark and Sin can probably comment on, being writers themselves. If you think like a storyteller... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male makes sense. brought in from a vehicle collision. He was away it's from not a straightforward drunk driving incident. On arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. But what... I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. I don't 
don't know. I really have no idea what the uh, surprise could be. Maybe um, Officer Hennings on, was jewels. dying? To 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Maybe Jules, 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 Jules. Was it this? Yeah, Jules. Come on. Yeah, 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 we're doing it. Shit, lost my train of thought. Was it that Officer Hennings was dying at the scene? And like, maybe... And this goes to 10. And maybe like, he killed purposely let him die? I don't know. Or maybe, like, killed him? Like, made sure he didn't survive? Can we get this on the screen, please? Oh, yeah, sorry. On the screen. On the screen. Eh, it can't be something like that. That just doesn't sound... Clear. Clear. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charge at 10. Oh, I'm so glad I went back and I listened to those cassettes. I would have missed out on... Uh, Let's go. Yeah, we're getting there, dude. Hey, this is some seriously old-ass equipment. Oh, that's 1986. They didn't have... They didn't have the automatic um, AEDs. Like, whoop! Ah, didn't mean to do that. Like we do nowadays, that uh, it... Clear. <coughs> it actually... The AEDs okay, themselves analyze your heart rate to see signal. if... It's in Let's a signal. Going. Increase again. Or in a signal. 360, charge full. If it's in a, uh, a rhythm that can be corrected by. Come on, 360, hurry. Uh, defibrillation. 360. <gasps> Something just happened! What was it? May Show raided me with a party of four. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So this is kind of a flashback where he had some semi-consciousness of the post-accident before he fell into the coma. He must have been semi-cognizant of what was going on around him because he had a... Uh, Clear. Because we saw this. Well, his his interpretation of this memory was some Seems kind of government conspiracy pulse. thing. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x-ray right away. Okay, x-ray. This is where we got caught up last time. Where are we with that x-ray? Let's like get it going now, please. Okay, uh, what was it? I need to turn... Crap, I need to turn this on. Shoot. Hold on a sec. Let me double check here. I don't want to screw this up again. Turn off the signal generator and the amp. Flip the CC86 x-ray to charge it, slide the TV monitor over to the far right. Can we get this on the screen, please? All right, Rose, don't fuck it up. Turn this off. And this. And turn this over to x-ray. Yeah, we did it! All right! <coughs> All right. Let's x-ray this mo mofo. And I bet you anything that this was used to drill into his head or something like that. Like we're gonna we're gonna be spun around, our head's gonna be put in there or some Looks shit, like and that's gonna just. Intracerebral hemorrhage. I know it. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Ah, what did I say? Switch on the drill, please. Yeah. I don't even know if I mentioned, but like, whoa, 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 X-ray. The drill. I see please. nothing. Hmm. Okay, that, and then turn off everything else, right? Uh, I think that's fine. Drill is on. Drill is on, El Capitan. Do we need to go to this one now? Well. Okay, drill is on. Something else needs to be on. This. Can we get this on the screen, please? It, oh, shoot, sorry. There we go. Drilling commences. Wait. Mr. Asian, you've made excellent progress. You're doing great. Our brain isn't over there. Oh, he would. Hmm, would he be? Hmm, would he be put under? Anesthesiologist. Hmm, hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it works the same way with uh, concussions as it does with. Whoa! 
concussions as it does with, um, in terms of you, you shouldn't fall asleep if you have a concussion, and then you shouldn't be put under with anesthesia if you have a concussion. I don't know. All right, we're back here. Ah! Clicked out again. Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six-month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. Let's just look around. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends and mom. There is a door to the hall. Let's look at our sister. Sorry, I don't know what you're looking at. Um, okay. <coughs> look, mom. Oh, I should say look at mom. Look at mom. What's she wearing? Okay. Look at dad. No? Look. Let, 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 at Jennifer. Alright. Nope, none of that. Uh, okay. Well, let's just go out the door then. Uh, go to door. Hmm. Walk to door. Forgot how to do this texting crap. What? Look door. The doorway is wide open, allowing guests to move freely throughout the house. Walk through... I don't know, what? Leave room? You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever, only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main wall. Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Hmm. Look around. Same as ever. Stairs, door to the living room, door to the kitchen. Uh, okay. Is there anything you guys want to look at? If there's anything you guys want me to, like, specifically look at, just let me know in the chat and I'll, like, go back and look. Um, let's look in the... L the hallway is welcoming as ever. Okay, so this is the house. This is the same house we know and kind of don't love. Well, we don't know. We don't know if we love it or not. Go to... living room. We shuffle past people to get there... to get back to the living room. Oh, whoops, we were just in the living room. Go. Oh. Mm. My bad. Okay, go back. Alright, now go to kitchen. Let's see what's in the utility, uh, the utility room. To say all the best parties are in the kitchen. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. Ah, oh, a hog roast? Is that the, uh, the, the carcass that was, uh, in the bad house? Hmm. Like a, like a decayed, very old carcass of the hog roast? Uh, eat hog roast. Hmm. Maybe later. No! Your dad went through all the trouble. Jesus. There's nothing worse than, like, going through all the trouble of, like, cooking something for a party or, like, a potluck or something and then nobody eats your food and you're like, well, shoot, I, like, spend money to, like, buy all the ingredients for this and, like, I'd spend the long time to actually cook this and I hate cooking, so then I'm just like, well, not, ne not again. Never again. Uh, food on the table. Look. Oops. Look. Look around. There is a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signaling you. Look. At. Wall. What does it say? Did I really type slash again? I've been playing too many MMOs. Look. At. Wall. What? Look. At. Writing. What? Look around. Writing on the wall. Look at Jen. 
Your sister is calling you over to talk. Talk to Jen. She's too far away, and the room is too loud. Go to Jen. You push through, apologizing over and over to get to Jennifer. You hug. You're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you're enjoying the party. Uh... Yeah. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Look at utility. You... Something happened in that utility room. Utility. Look at utility. Door. I guess. Because there was a red X on it in the bad house, and it was locked even in the good house. She speaks up over the din, asking you to get her a drink. Oh, I can't. Okay. Did I lose my opportunity? Get Jen a drink. You pour Jen a drink, and one for yourself, too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. Yes. You tell her yes, that you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Not fuck up so much. So, are we going on this trip by ourselves? The way I read the the uh, the way I read the starting text was that uh, it was like I thought all of them were going on the trip together, but apparently not the sister. So maybe it's just James going by himself. It seems that way. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. So yeah, it sounds like he's going on a trip by himself. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not fuck up so much. That sounds like an internal narrative he says to himself rather than, you know, what his family says. I, I think it's probably highly unlikely that his family was like, yeah, I think you really need to take a trip. Maybe it'll help you get some perspective and stop fucking up so much. I like, I seriously think, I seriously doubt that's, that's how it went. But I feel like this is reflective of how he thinks about himself. She's going to miss you, you're going to miss her. She walks away. Alright, I want to look at that utility room door. Look. Wait. Oh. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding, smiling at the approving faces. There's so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink! Were we drinking too? <sighs> Let's try the utility door again. Look at utility door. The utility room door is unlocked. That's odd. Oh, let's go in. Guys, we have to go in. Go to utility. Utility room. We have to go in. What's in here? What's going on? Is this the secret? You're never allowed in here normally. This is where dad keeps his fine wines and whiskey. Oh my god. Did he... Oh... Did he frame the other driver? You're never allowed in here normally. This is where dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Ceiling to floor racks. A collector, although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. I want to look around more closely. There are racks of fine wines and the door to the kitchen. Look at wines. Oops. Some of this wine is older than you. Wow. I've read... Olaf says, I've read the Doin da Dion Dionia house? Open doors are bad. I have not read the Dionia house. Enlighten me. What's so bad about open doors? Look at... Card. Here we go. Card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything 
You've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. <gasps> oh no. Did he frame the other driver? That's impossible. That's impossible because the hospital would have known immediately. They would have checked. I mean, they would have they would have run his blood like as soon as he got to the ER. They would know if his blood alcohol level was high. And they would have run the they would have even ran the the blood tests on the uh the deceased man. Huh. See, his family sounds extremely supportive. We're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. So, they definitely don't think that he's been fucking up. Sure sounds like a wealthy family, though. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room around, room about you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Hmm. Ark is getting in his car now. Drive safely, Ark, please. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Yeah, this sounds like a very... I want to look at the writing! Go back. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh, go to kitchen. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. Oh dear. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give the thumbs up to Dad across the room. He nods and winks. Look around. I did it again. <laughs> it's just the same thing. Look around. Busy and noisy. We'll need to find somewhere quieter. Um, look. I tried to look at... Look at... Wall. Look at the wall. Ugh! What's happening? Sin! Sin is here! The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. I didn't know what else to write here. Keep being awesome, Rose. Aw, thank you. <clears throat> Sin, Sins of Science, is on a two-month streak. Oh, yeah. Dionia being a meat-eating flower. Is that real? Olaf, is that a real thing? Dionia is a meat-eating flower? For real? Um, look at writing dang it it said there was writing on the wall guys shit what the hell hold on phone went off just need to check it give me a moment what I did notice about this game is that you can you can miss opportunities to look at something you have to look at it at the the right appropriate time where the description says something about it if you're in the same room later you might not be able to look at it you finished the cat lady games really shouldn't let me name my save files I come up with some weird save files well well what did you think of the, the game I missed last week's stream because I was out at a movie with my brother on Monday and you worked on Friday I want I have to know like let me make sure that I didn't miss it No, you can't. I don't think. I don't think you can read it. Maybe. Maybe. There are a bunch of them. There is also a flower that lures rodents to poop in them, so never trust a comfortable toilet. <laughs> wow, I did not know that. Wait, do, uh, do, um, ah, what is this? Do f flowers that eat bugs count as meat eating? Like the Venus flytrap, obviously, right? Okay, I don't think you can look, I don't think that right now you can look at the writing on the utility room. Uh, what to do now? Maybe, maybe just go to my room? He said someplace quieter. Um, go upstairs. Okay, maybe I need to go to hallway. You go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through, and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. What? Hmm. 
Look at Jen. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. What? Is that a hallucination? Go to... Go to Jen. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. What happened? Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm sorry, I don't understand. Help, Jen? I'm sorry, I don't understand. What? It's Jen covered in blood. Was she already dying? Was she already hurt and we were taking her to the hospital? I don't know what to do. Jen! I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Um. Call for help. I'm sorry I don't understand. I'm sorry I don't understand. Sorry I don't understand. Oh, it's her! What happened? We just saw her! Oh! Talk! Talk! Talk to Jen! Thank you! Talk to Jen! I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I'm so sorry. So is she. Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. He's stable I for now? I don't want to see him. <gasps> he was the one drinking. He was the one drinking. Whoa. Whoa! Okay, so that was just like, I don't know, a flash of a hallucination or something that I'm thinking is just happening in his... So I think this is him remembering the incident, but then inserted into the memory is like Jen standing there all bloody. Something ha had stopped you in your tracks. So you, she waves your hand of it. Uh, so you still wait. She waves your hand in front of you and asks you to drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Jeez. Um. Uh. Talk to Jen. Yeah, yeah. We can talk in the car. Go get your keys. No. No, ask dad. Uh, look at dad. <sighs> it's not going to let me do anything but what it wants me to, is it? Uh, sounds like memories are blending together. Yeah, I guess that's probably a better way to put it. And it's still 10.05. That's what it was when we originally were at the screen in the house abandoned. Um... We still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Um. Tell Jen no. No. <laughs> I tried. Okay. All right. Let's do what we have to do. Um. Look around. Doors to the kitchen and living room lead from here while stairs can take you up. You'd love to call it a night, but Jen is waiting patiently. For keys. You need to look you need to look for them. They must be either in the kitchen or the living room. I just said look for them. Um go to living room. You're sure your keys are in the living room. Why can't we just tell dad or mom to give her a ride home? The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversation. 
There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. Talk to mom. Tears immediately start to appear in her eyes. My son, off to America, she gives you a hug. Hug mom. Aw. Talk to mom. Uh. Uh. Is dad here? Look around. All right. <sighs> Look for keys. For some reason, I want to share my safe file names. They are, yeah, I'm curious now. Refuse. Talk to Jen. <laughs> the living room has a much more resonant with me. Shit. Wait, what did I do? Look. What did it say when I looked for keys? You need to look for them. Oh, look around. Ah, I'm not spelling things right today. One of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. A drinks cabinet. Look. Coffee. Table. Drinks on coasters like proper civilized people. You can't see your keys. Sane distance, insane closeness, everything, getting out, revelation memorial, questioning the door, bloody recompense, answer the fate, mail compartments, <laughs> maniac mantis, downfall door, early dark night, been strong through this, and eve of Adam. Oh wow, those are really clever. Let's go back to the other room. Empty handed, you head back into the hall. You're standing back in the hall, bottle of whiskey in hand, but no car keys. Jen points to the living room and sighs as she puts on her coat. Refuse. No, nope, refuse won't work, Sin. Damn it. Question the door is the best out of context. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, she says it's in the living room? Oh, I should look on top of, uh, go to living room. I should look on top of the drink cabinet. You're sure your keys are in the living room? Okay. Questioning the door. Uh, okay. Look at drink. No, let's just put cabinet. I don't want to confuse it. Your mom's collection of wines and spirits. Definitely no keys here. In here. Look at couch. Look in couch. Hmm. Coffee table in the middle of the room that it's not on. Drinks cabinet. These slow ass drivers need to get out of my way. Oh! Check jacket! Look. At. Jacket. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. This is so bad. This is such a bad idea. This is such a bad idea. So I think what happened here is that his he was driving drunk, his sister died, and then he probably and then maybe framed the other driver for it. You got both. Jeez. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning and no one else is in any fit state to drive. You can handle it though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? No. Refuse. Say no. <sighs> yeah, there's no way it's not going to let us, so... Um... Leave house. The cold air hits you. You're glad you have your jacket with you. There is a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits at the front of the house. Crisp snow, cold air, and dark. Let's get this over with. 
That's not good, having snow on the road. Fresh snow. Get in car. You fumble with the car handle, confused, until Jen tells you maybe use the key in your hand. Use key. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing! As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. Look at note. The note is from Dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also, found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. For when you get back? Oh, he was planning on leaving the car here. Maybe? Hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to... Huh. Maybe he was supposed... To she said that's for when you get back. Um, a key? Okay, that's cool. Alright, whatever. Uh, start car. Walk your path. Walk your path, Sin! You try to turn the ignition with sheer willpower despite holding the keys in your hand. Seriously? Put key in ignition. Takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. Oh, this is bad. Turn key. You turn the key in the ignition and the car roars to life. Um... What would you say? What, put car in drive? drive. The car squeals but stays stationary. Oh, haha. <laughs> Jen suggests releasing the brake. Talk to Jen. I can't. Look at Jen. She's trying to get warmed up inside the freezing cold car. Better get moving. Release brake. You you very hesitantly release the handbrake drive. You put the car in gear and pull out of the drive driveway like a first time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. You, I, am driving very drunk on the road towards the town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. You shouldn't, this shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. <sighs> left. Uh, go left? You don't want to, but you had better ask Jen for directions. Talk to Jen. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. Go left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you are on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. That's not what really happened, though, is You're it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you, crazy sister. Strange. There is a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like slow motion. Shit. Uh... uh brakes! Brakes! You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside joins the James, inside. For fuck's sake, pull over. The whole world around you begins to scream. James! It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Your parents. Yourself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity trying to hold you in the seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole into the cha chassis. Poisonous fumes spill into your car from the engines. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. Do we have to look into the eye? Ugh! I made it to my bed. Glad you did, Ark! Alright, let's enjoy this ending then. Um. 
What is this? Look for sister. She's alive, but she has been hurt bad. She's trapped in the wreckage. Climb out. You can't move. Your seatbelt is still in place. Release seatbelt. Shit. Release seat belt. You release your seat yourself from the seatbelt. Gravity takes over and you slump on the roof of the car. Help, sister. You can't do anything for her right now. You need to help yourself. Climb out. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings you pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing holding your whiskey and your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at a distance. Oh boy. Help, sister! <laughs> no! There's something so wrong and kind of like a feeling of violation being forced to do something that is so very against what you want to do. Ugh. I felt that way in, in the cat lady for a couple of things I had to do. <sighs> I don't know what to type. Look around. Crash site. Smoke billows from the crashed cars to the sky above. Look at blue car. The hazard lights are blinking and fumes are rising from the engine. Through the smashed window, you can see the motionless driver. <sighs> see, I don't think like this, so I don't know what I'm actually supposed to put. Go to blue car. The door's jammed. You don't have time for messing around like this, James. <sighs> well, that's not smart thinking, James, is it? They will eventually find it there and will link it to you. to driver. The driver. It's an older man. His body is slumped and his face is bloodied. He's dead, James. He can't be helped. But he might still be able to help you. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the thrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then, very deliberately, spill the remainder of the bottle's contents onto the driver, and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. Wow. Yeah, I guess I could have tried to run away. Well, I wouldn't want to leave my sister. Yeah, that's pretty shit. That's super, super shit. Um, go to... A circle of flashing lights surrounds you, illuminating the crash site in the darkness. Behind them, an army of people all staring. One figure steps out a silhouette and walks towards you. Huh? Oh, it's, uh, oh, it's the, uh, yeah, police lights. The silhouette is a police officer and in uniform. He beckons you to approach. Pros officer. As you approach the man, the pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in I your head increases. You. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me. You have to remember. Oh dear. It was all your fault. Damn. I know what you did. How you left.
left me there to protect yourself. Jesus. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that office and you wrecked all of our lives. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. It's gone. Where did it go? Something familiar Say about it. this bed, what they did Tell to them. me. It was all my fault, right? That's what I'm supposed to... Listen to yourself. It has to end, James. Oh, I can't type anything. Do you not understand? Startled <gasps> me. This yeah, James. episode you're having must come to an end. Sorry, I'll look at the chat in a Make minute. It stop. We're Make kind it of out of climax. Session in the station. Stop the session. Go back to where we started. Oh gosh. So that Put was an it. end okay. to this nightmare. All of your episodes were recorded to this tape. This is the fourth. We can do this, James. Can let it go. You can let go. Oh, I thought I would have to click that. Oh, I did. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Hishin. Now you're going I guess to prison. We should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect it'll take you anywhere. But I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Oh, God. Come on. Let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, he lost his mind, didn't he? <sighs> wow, he lost his mind. That's why he's not going to prison. I wonder if there are, are alternate endings. I, I don't imagine there would be because that would kind of ruin the story. All the clues left along the way. Wow. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh. Uh, Blind Ghost, hey, welcome to the stream. Good to see you here. So, uh, you can't believe I'm at... Dude, I took, I took a several year hiatus. Like, I have not been active this entire time. That's really cool that you, um, that you found me watching The Path. That was literally one of my very first Let's Plays. I was so new to it. And like I, like I always say, like I got more negative, nasty comments on the path, like when it, when it was probably within the first year or two it was out than on any other videos I did. Just really ripping into me about, I talk too much, like just play the game, my voice was annoying, or whatever. So it's really nice to hear that. Like it's just always so awesome to me when people say that they really like the path because for the longest time, like I felt I got I got a lot of a lot of mean trolls. Ark doesn't think there's any alternate endings. I'm <laughs> I made that playthrough for you, chip guy. 
Found your way of playing so different and interesting. No, I love those videos. I watch the entire playlist every now and then. Oh man, <laughs> that's that's so cool. Oh, oh, this is different. The background is different. Centra Vid, sessions one through four. James Asian, Doctor Alexander. Wow. Okay, so this whole time I thought that. Ooh, what's going on here? Blind Ghost to subscribe. Thanks, Ghost. Appreciate it. Uh, so, so this whole time with the whole blending of memories with imagination, I thought was just because of like the coma, the head injury. But come to find out, he really didn't actually get very, he didn't really actually get very injured, did he? It didn't seem like it at all. Well, he did say he had a major pain in his head, and then that really increased right before he passed out. So maybe, so he did, he did have a head injury. What am I talking about? When we were, when he was in the hospital, he had to be defibrillated, um, and they drilled into his brain to relieve the pressure. But it seems like that was nothing compared to the psychological impact that was done. Like, the psychological damage that was done. So, I wonder how much time passed between the accident and this last session where he finally remembers everything. Because I would want to know, is it, is, hmm, is all of this um, fantasy or false memories and all of that, is it all psychological? Is it mostly psychological? Is it, or is it mostly from the head injury? Hmm. Traumatic brain injuries, yeah, they can have a, a lot of lasting effects. But, I would, I would actually have to come to the conclusion that they were primarily psychological, seeing as how he's in a doctor's care, and the doctor says, we're going to have to tell the police, but I don't expect you're going anywhere. I expect you're going to be here for a long time. I, I guess that answers all of my questions right there. That, uh, well, unless the brain injury caused enough brain damage. Can I wonder about this. Do you guys think that somebody who has a traumatic brain injury that makes them incapable of, I don't know, making making decisions or being held accountable, somebody somebody who would have to be in, in an institution because, and ba basically they wouldn't be prosecuted for, un under the, um, uh, I guess under, for it being a disability, let's say. They have like a mental disability, but it's from a traumatic brain injury. They weren't born that way or anything like that. What if they committed a crime before that brain injury happened? Could they be cr prosecuted after becoming disabled for something they did before they were disabled? What do you guys think about that? I mean, that's kind of a moral question at the same time because um, because we don't put mentally challenged people in prison not just because they don't under they wouldn't under some of them wouldn't understand why they were there why they were being punished it wouldn't it wouldn't do any good right not not just because they weren't held accountable but because they wouldn't be able to handle it maybe being in that kind of environment I wonder if I'm being very confusing hmm. Caddis says yes and no It can go to trial to figure out the legality of who is at fault, but what's supposed to be the point of prison is rehabilitation, which couldn't happen at that point. Correct. That that wouldn't be taken care of at all. They wouldn't be taken care of at all. Yeah, okay. So, 
you think you think that a person who was sound of mind committed committing a any kind of really horrible act and then not being found out or caught until a later date that for whatever reason they are no longer like mentally sound of mind they're mentally handicapped they they have a very very limited um, I guess cognitive ability you don't think that they would go to jail for it yeah I think I think that that's a difficult question because you also have to look at it from the pers from the perspective of the family members of the victims the uh, the police officers who obviously want justice to be done I honestly don't think that prison is just supposed to be a deterrent. I don't really have a strong opinion on what I think it's supposed to be, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be seen as, you know, justice. Like, you do a bad thing, so you have to get some kind of recompense for it. If that's the right word. That's why we put people in there for life. That's not about rehabilitation. Some places, some countries, will put you in prison for life. Caddis says, I think they should still be charged in case they, I don't know, get better through therapy or something. Then they wouldn't immediately be released to the general public. Yeah, good point. Hmm. But I think that, um... Oh, Sin! Thank you! Sin just tipped $10. Thank you very much. That little violin ditty, by the way, is from Rule of Rose, which I think will probably... Okay, I'm not going to say probably because I don't want to be misleading, but might be next. Oh my god, Ark, you and your little emotes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, know vic I know family members of victims who have been murdered, they want like a sense of justice to be done, but then again, like a mentally incapable person shouldn't really be in prison. <laughs> yes, Caddis, rule of rose. I'll probably be working on getting that up and running on my computer in the next few days. Hmm. Well, I think that was a really good I think they wrapped everything together in a nice little package at the end. I'm very pleased with the conclusion of this game. I'm just really happy that they they put everything together. The one thing that is bothering me is the writing on the wall in the kitchen of the house. <laughs> I think maybe the other thing that I think may be just a tiny little nagging string that um, hasn't been tied off is that um, when he's having the, uh, the the false memory of being at the being at the snow bunker um, the doctor says that his family would play number puzzles with him while he was in a coma just to get responses and try to engage his mind and pull him out of the coma And after, and at the end of the, uh, and at the, the ending cinematic or so, or whatnot, it says that he lost his family. And it said, it, it kind of showed, we heard the mom's voice saying that he didn't want to see James, he didn't want to speak to him. So it's implied that, like, the, f the parents disowned him, maybe. That he lost everything, right? He lost his parents, too. So I'm thinking they disowned him. But then they were playing number number puzzles with him. That may be a little loose end. But that's that's seriously picking at straws. It's so insignificant. But I am incredibly curious. <laughs> I'm incredibly curious about what the numbers on the wall were. <sighs> Anybody else have any takeaways from the game? If you've either seen this before, even if you haven't uh, watched our entire stream all the way through, or if you have and you think that I missed some some point, important point, was that before they knew the full story? Maybe. Um, I don't. I don't think so, Caddis, because.
the doctor was telling the mom that the sister passed away and that James was relatively stable. So it sounds like it's within the first few hours of the accident. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But how could the parents have known? How could the mom have known that it was James' fault? Maybe they did run the blood test. Maybe they did check his blood alcohol level and they knew it all along. This was just for James' therapy. Oh my gosh, maybe... Okay, so it's not a plot hole. He did not... Maybe, maybe, he didn't necessarily... Um, cover up... Succeed in covering up what he did. Maybe they all knew. We're looking at... We've lo been looking at all of this from the perspective of the doctor and from James. Not the police officers. Maybe the police officers on the outside knew the whole time. Like, they checked, they ran his blood alcohol level and they go, Whoa, this guy was extremely drunk. Like, I don't know where this whiskey bottle came from. Maybe they knew what he did all along. And remembering it was just part of his therapy and re mental rehabilitation. Counterpoint to that would be that the doctor said... We should probably tell this to the police. They said James confessed? When did they say that? At what part of the game? In the ending? He mentioned at some point during the sessions. It, he mentioned it. Oh, I must have missed that. That would have been big. Alright guys, and- oh! Oh, let's see, let's see what- oh, let, let's see the little message! Sin, I didn't read your message! I see your message. Pony Island, please! Or whatever game suits your fancy. I honestly have no idea what kind of games you aim to- you aim at your, uh, analytical skills. Oh. I've never looked at Pony Island. I will have to look at what that is. Yeah, I have no idea what that game is. I'll look at it. He said, repeat what you said in your previous session. Hmm. Ah, I must have missed that. That sucks. Alright, guys. Well, I think we can go ahead and, uh, I just saw detention. I think we can go ahead and wrap up the stream at this point. Having concluded, uh, Stories Untold. This was a really good recommendation, uh, recommendation arc. Thank you. So, uh, if anybody else has recommendations for games that you think I'd be interested in, if you, um... If they're kind of along the same idea or vein that I usually play, what I really like are dark themes, psychological horrors, things that are not what they seem on the surface and not necessarily to be taken at face value. I mean, I like other, other games too, but I feel like they make much better material for like discussion and analysis and just talking about. So, uh... Go ahead and make recommendations. I add them to a list and then I look them up. I do a little research and see if I'm interested. And then I add them to like a list of priority in terms of if I have nothing to play, then I have something to reference in like, oh, I wanted to play these games. Let me pick one from here. Pony Island is great. Cool. I will look that up. Thanks everybody for joining us, for joining us on the stream. Uh, I will probably be back with you guys later this week. Have a good Monday. Take care.